Why are we doing the NA even though we voted for it? Is that the NA that bad? It looks fine. Like, you just start by getting rid of all the number theories so that what you have is like... FP to the... You have FP to the P minus 1. With no subset, which has some equal to zero, right? Oh my god. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, let's let's let me do a couple of predictions. So P equals two is silly. You get at most one element. P equals three. I. It's weird to me that it's like F. This P and this P minus don't feel related to me. Like, it feels like you should be able to ask the same question for FP to the N. Which is strange to me. Like, wait, what? Why not? Question. Why not FP to the N? Like, does the fact that this... It seems like there's no reason why N and P should be the same. So maybe when I do small cases, I really should try to do P comma N pairs. You know, we only care about the pairs with N equals P minus one. But it seems like at least when I'm still trying to get a feel for what's going on, there's no reason I should force myself to set N equals P minus one. So for F, t F of, for F of P to the one, the answer is always p minus one element, and this is a result of like one one, and this follows from that really classical: if you have um, p numbers, you can find a contiguous in a circle. You can find a contiguous subsequence whose sum is equal to zero. Um, So, what about fp squared? Do I know how to do the problem for fp squared? So, I can definitely get 2p minus 2 by taking like one. several times and 0 1 several times. Can I do better than that? Like, can I get something that's... This is, this is like, a pretty small subset. Can I get something that's closer to linear? Can't you always get p times p minus 1? What's your proposed subset? This is what n equals 2. Okay, so what, what's, what am I missing? Oh, oh, you're talking about the general case. Uh... Why is that set not valid? Yeah, I, I agree that for if any, I agree in general, like you can always get n times p minus one by taking a bunch of copies of one zero up to zero and so on. Uh. So, I'm just curious what I can do better. I can't do better when n equals 1, I know that. Can I do better when n equals 2? Like, can, can I get more than... I, I want to say the answer is no. Uh...
Mm, what am I missing? Uh, is it is it really 2p minus 2 for fp squared? Can I do better than that? One thing I have in my head is that the uh, there's a lot of vectors, like, there's some vector space structure here where, uh, you know, or even just FQ, right? I can identify it with that, FP or something. So it's, it sort of feels like you have an n-dimensional vector space. And that gives you some intuition, for example, like 1, 0 shouldn't really be important. Like the basis vectors don't seem like they should really depend on each other. So I wonder if I can just kill it with linearly inde linear independence of some sort. Uh, maybe? I'm not sure. So, okay, for people that aren't following, rephrase question is let n equals p minus 1, uh, what's the largest multiset of vectors in f of p to the nth power? So, an n dimensional fp vector space such that no non empty subset has zero sum. And I'm looking at this and I don't see a reason why n equals p minus 1 should be important. So I'm first trying to see if I can do cases like n equals 2. And I can't do n equals 2, but I have some ideas. Uh, I feel like n equals 2, the answer should not be 2p minus 2. I feel like I should be able to do better. Um, if I take like... Uh, I don't know. So I'm going to start by saying like without loss of generality, 1, 0, thinking about n equals 2 case. And without loss of generality, I'm going to say 1, 0, and 0 when I'm in here. Because I should have two linearly independent vectors, otherwise there's at most p minus 1, guys. Like we should assume it takes up, uh, yeah. By linear transformation, I'm going to assume 0, 1, and 1, 0 are present. And that does like very little for me. Uh. Like I have that. So what what do I do if I have one zero and zero one? Can I, I should be able to stuff in like even for even for p equals five? I feel like I should be able to stuff in more than eight vectors because it's really hard to get the sum to equal zero. You need both components to equal zero. Uh, like I almost feel like if I stick in like eight randomish vectors, I should be able to. Well, maybe that's not true. Hmm. Is P prime important? I think the fact that the base field is prime will probably matter because you have... Um, Because what? I think P prime should matter just because the the um you you want to be able to use linear algebra things and you can if there's a field if it's not a field at the bottom. I'm very confused about this P minus one. Like I see no reason why this number should be P minus one. And I feel like that will probably be important at some point, but I don't see how yet. So I'm still playing with general N. Maybe that's a mistake. Maybe I should think a little more about p minus one here. Is it the case that if n is p minus one, I get like a different equality case other than just basis vectors? VFP? I think that's very unlikely to be relevant. Being VFP.
Oh, wait a minute. But also, like... Like, the dumb bound is P squared, and there's no way... I think there's just no way that... I think I want to keep thinking about P plus 5. I really want to know if there's any example at all that isn't 8 vectors. Because I feel like I'm... I'm being too shy somehow and I'm not trying to write down vectors. Can I? Maybe I should do P plus 3. Maybe P plus 3 would be good enough. So can I get five vectors? One, zero... Hmm. The thing is there's no, there's so many subsets. Um... That doesn't work. Mm, no, 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 no. Okay, actually, you know what? <laughs> Let's bring in the big hammers. <laughs> what, what do you mean, D theorem's not defined? So, alright, I'm going to I'm going to take a quick side break and try to bring out a big nuke. So there's a theorem that's called Kelsey Davenport. Um, what is FP to the XOR? So this is an O+, plus, and it just means a direct sum. You can ignore the O+, plus if it's confusing for you. If you look at a napkin, this is a notation I like, but I just mean FP squared, that's all. So... For A, B, subset of F, Q. This is a result that should be true. Um, I think. Well, it's, it's true for F, P. And I'm trying to think if I can... The proof that I know is by combinatorial no still inserts, so oh jeez, do I am I really coming down this rabbit hole? <sighs> this is terrible. I don't wanna go down this rabbit hole. <laughs> I don't know. What, what am I supposed to do? Why is the answer like n equals two, p equals three? 
Oh man, I was optimistic about this problem. I was like, oh, this looks like the additive combo problem. I mean, it's- it feels like combo. Uh, I don't know, it just looks like the kind of thing that should be like rigid-ish combo, but I'm starting to see that this- There's- it's additive combo, which- oh my god, I hate additive combo. So is there- there's just no example for p equals 3 with 5 vectors, right? there I don't I don't think there should be I wonder if the n equals 2k somehow relies on Why is it a multi-set of vectors? Uh, the original problem is this was a set before taking mod p, so you can repeat numbers by just having them different mod p. Like what? So what's like if I take zero one twice and then like one zero twice and then one one once or something? That's not good. It's like a one 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 zero. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just writing down some examples and seeing why there's a thing that sums to zero. Um, this requires everything to sum to zero. Any proper subset doesn't, right? No, some proper subsets still do. It's just so weird because the two-dimensional case feels so different from 1D. Like, 1D case is... that thing. What do I do in the 2D case? Ah, uh, crap. What was the Couchy Davenport theorem for? Uh, I considered using it and then I decided that it was. I didn't want to go that route. Yes. 
Set of subsets where one component subs to zero? That's fair. What would I do with that? Though I could definitely find some guys such that the first component sums to zero. And then... Well... Oh, hang on. Here, 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 here. Um, there exists... If there exists P elements such that... Thank you, Space Sam, for the sub. If there exists P minus one elements such that... Claim. If there exists P minus one elements such that the... First component is non-zero, then... Those, uh... I'm gonna take P minus one components as the first component is for I can't. Um, if I take P minus one elements such first component is non-zero, then those elements, when put together, can give any residue class for the first component. This is not what I wanted actually. I, I wanted something like this, but. Give any residue class for the first component. That's fine. Uh, so that gives me a bit more leverage. That means I just need to... Nah, never mind. For some reason, I thought that I could use this to induct down. You can take a bijection from FP X1 to FP to the end? I mean, yeah, I consider that. Does that actually matter? Like, am I going to have to use the multiplication in there? If so, that's like really depressing. Uh. We should randomly have an election watch if you're stuck too long? Why? I think this is good though. This is, this is a Koji Davenport in a way that actually gives me some power. It's not just like, oh, I can get zero. It's I can get every residue class for the first component using just P minus one elements. And then the same is true for the second component, but then I need them to be compatible somehow. Don't please put this in combo null. It really has that combo null feeling though. I mean, I feel like you shouldn't be upset if I put it in combo null if I solve it on stream, because then you'll know the solution. Um. <laughs> the other thought I had is maybe I can try to do some projection type thing where like if you have n times p minus one guys and I don't know. At least when n equals 2, I really I want to see if I can pair off the vectors such that their projections are on the same plane of some sort and then run from there. I don't think that helps. I 
What is the actual meaning of Nostalenzatz? It means theorem of zeros, is what the... if you translate it into English, what that means. Maybe I should switch to the whiteboard. Oh crap. Okay, cool. Yeah, how do you even do the n equals 2 case is my problem. So I can see like here, um, the x-axis is fp, the x-axis is fp. So if I can like, at least when p equals 3, if I have a like one zero and one zero, then I can see how you do it. Well, holy crap, it's really zoomed out. Zoom in. I don't know. Like, it's sort of like if I have p minus one vectors in the same plane, then it's fine. I don't know how I'm gonna get that. That seems too constrained. Like, what if all my vectors just have different directions or something? Then I'm sad, right? Oh, there's only p directions, though. Hang on, hang on. So, fp squared, um... Let me draw and like five as an illustration. That's not enough things though. Mm. It it works for p equals three. If p equals three, then it's enough to do this dumb like hyperplane argument. It's definitely not good enough for. If I have five vectors, okay. So I have a proof for fp f three squared. No. Uh, which is not going to generalize, but I'll state it just for kicks. Um, for three, there's like three different slopes. And there's five vectors. So two vectors with the same slope. Let's assume it's one comma zero. Then you take the other three vectors, make them vanish in the y component, and then add as many copies of the x thing as you need. For this to work in general, it's not going to. Um, if I have f5 squared, then I have five slopes. Wait, no, 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 uh, no. Yeah, it's not gonna work in general. So somehow five is actually really different from three. Because three is so small. So I, the, the smallest examples, okay. So in here, I have five slopes and like nine vectors and I want to <sighs> oh yeah I should put the rephrase question on the yeah good point
The quality cases aren't well behaved, I totally believe that. Like, I think the Kochi Davenport type things, like, there's no reason the quality cases are well behaved. But I really want to know whether the answer is actually a... Like, I really feel like I'm grasping onto, like, some straws here. Um... Like, even if I can do this, it would, it would probably use the fact that, like... Wait. What is, like... Even if I can get two linearly d dependent vectors, that doesn't really help me much, right? I don't see what I'm supposed to do. Ah. I'm like ready to try to pull out the combo null gun, but I don't see how I can use it. I don't know that tool well enough. This number of subsets is too freaking large. Um. What do you mean by zero sum? I, I literally mean zero sum, like the vector sum to zero. If there are three distinct vectors, the bound isn't hard. Wait, how do you do it if there's three distinct vectors? Well, that was generally one comma one is one of them. Also, I think I might have misspoken earlier about the number of slopes. It's like four slopes. <sighs> the other is PA, comma B, and C, comma D. Yeah, I didn't get that. <laughs> uh... So I am not even correct about the number of slopes. The number of slopes is like six, I think, because it's also a vertical slope. This is so bad.
<laughs> I don't know. Pick pick a non quadratic residue of your choice. What am I supposed to do? So you're looking at the x minus y's, so F K B The five one comma why do you guys why do we why are we given those five one comma ones? I'm so confused. <laughs> Please explain. Uh Oh, this is just if there's three different vectors. Uh, I totally believe that you can do it with three different vectors, because one of them will appear a bunch of times. Um, uh, do I need to moderate AOPS? I'll do it later, I don't have the patience right now. Okay, so 3VT, this is like, this is only in the case where there's like three, there's a vector repeated, there's only three different types of vectors, right? Is that correct? Yes, okay. I'll keep that in mind, although I'm not see how that's, I'm not sure that's going to be likely to help us later. Like, I still- the thing I'm still suspicious about is why the dimension has to be one less than the number of elements. Um... I think this solves n equals 2. I'm so- why are you using 1 comma 1 as the distinguished vector? Why can't you use 1, like, 1 comma 0 or something? If you have no 0, you have- no, 1 comma is 1 and 1 comma 0 are the same because you can take a linear transformation from one to the other. No, you can't use 0 comma 0. That's the only one you can't use. <laughs> no 0 sum. Why do you have to cover most sums? You have like 2 to the bunch of things and none of them is equal to 0. Uh...
such that the two groups don't overlap. I'm very confused now. If AP is you become CD plus EF, then you need to have either C comma D or my. So this is like assuming maximality. Yes, I agree that's probably why P needs to be prime. I think the P prime makes it into an actual vector space where linear transformations make sense. Uh, yeah. But even, I, I just even can't even do the P equals 2 case. It's just... Okay, so assume there's three different classes of vectors. Uh, whatever they are. Sure. Okay, okay. No classes, baby. Are things like Chevalier and Combo no fair game? What does fair game mean? If you think, if it's, we expect you to know them, then like, no, we don't expect people to know this at all. Um, but. Can't you just say there's some linear combination that sums to zero? Uh, if you can prove that, that'd be really nice. That's like the problem. Um, <laughs> I mean, but I've been using Koji David, but it's, it's like Koji David for the thing that says if I have p minus one guys, um, if I have p minus one vectors, then their projections onto each coordinate hit everything. That's actually really strong. <laughs> or with, with non-zero coordinates. So I have to like, I don't know. Oh, that's pretty good, actually. Okay, I, I see what the approach is. Um, okay, okay, I, I, I think I understand what approach is happening. So, 3VT suggestion is the following. We're gonna... Let's take two distinguished vectors. 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and everything else. So, we'll put the vectors into three sets. They're called... Uh, this is called set A. These are the things that are in this line. This is set B. This is the set of things that are in this line. And then set C will consist of everything else, all of these other vectors. There seems to be a flaw. Oh, darn. I got excited for a moment. You assume the question zeros should all be distinct, which I don't know if I can assume. I don't think you can. Oh, uh, so this bound won't give me something good enough. Because I can see you always have at least B minus one different things here. You always have at least A minus one different things here. And then here the C is like... Whatever it is. C minus one in either projection. Yeah, I see. Your concern is that... The... Yeah, if they have the same thing, you're kind of just dead. Okay, so people keep saying combo no. I want to try it too, even though I just don't know this technique well enough to trust myself to use it, but I don't know. At this point, I really want to try it. So what would a combo no approach look like? It's like, you care about subsets. Um, I never know how this thing works. Let, let me review my combo no notes.
So if it's if it's gonna be NP minus times P minus one, um This is, uh, if this is gonna be common, no, I'm really disappointed. So I have like a bunch of vectors. Uh, what do I do with? So we're gonna work in FP to the end. We're gonna take one intrinsic field K, which is like all these things. It's characteristic P field. And there's like a, there's like some N elements or something. So what's the polynomial I'm supposed to write down? For each element, I can either choose to use it or not. How do I get the subsets though? I need a degree to not be too big, is the thing. I don't... I don't know if I should... I should I do it over FP? Thank you, Brian ZJK for the sub. Six months! Oh man, we've been running this stream for a while. Maybe n equals p minus 1 will actually be important. So if I look at the ith component, what's my variable? I'm, I'm hoping this thing is equal to 0. So I'm going to instantiate a variable xi, which is either 0 or 1. I don't like that. Let's try it anyways. Uh, this is from r equals 0 to... r equals 1 to n. Well, call, we'll do k equals 1 to n. k equals 1 through n of xi times xi is in 0, 1. Let me, let me write this down and just see what happens. The ith vector's kth component. This is from... This is terrible though. This is a problem. The monomials are... I can def I'm starting to see why n equals p minus 1 might actually matter. If it's going to be common null, what you want is like you want... You have n equations that you want to equal 0. And you do something like this. The problem is that this is really bad because like... I'm not really... The degree is going to be way too big, right? I need the xi's to be basically multilinear. Um, and that's not going to happen. Let me look at the proof of Troy Zanier. I never remember that proof, but I feel like it's similar to something there. Troy Zanier. I guess it's this file. Freaking bandwidth. Da 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 blah 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 blah. <sighs> Dang it! I can't find it. One moment, please.
Yeah, I feel like I I feel like I'm finally starting to see why n equals p minus one matters because I think the polynomial should take like this shape, where you sum like a bunch of p minus one powers, and if it's zero, then each thing is zero. Um, but how do I how do I make the sets big enough? Because right now I was trying to use a binary variable, but that's not going to work out. Um, if I have x, i, 0, and 1, then I need the, the polynomial to be linear in the variables, and there's no way that's going to happen. Um, so I need to do something a little smarter if I want this approach to plausibly work. So what I want to be is, I, I really want each... I can't... I can't, I can't get it. Uh, like, I really want an indicator variable for each V and then like the J, the kth component. But it just won't work if I decide it up this way. I, I need to put if I want to use n equals b minus one. I got to project it like this. Oh man, v. Thank you, Sasid, for the cheer. What do I, th I think the answer is p minus one times p, right? That's the number of things. So what? How else can I can I like group the vectors into groups of like p minus one or something so stupid like that? And then what? What would I? What if I do this something really silly like the other way? Suppose, so like we'll let x, x1, we, we group the, we make a group of p vectors. We'll call this group like capital V1. And then x1 is, no, that doesn't work. What am I talking about? Just that was stupid. I need xi to correspond to a choice of the... No, that's not good. Mm. Most of us think it's actually np and p-1 is not useful. You really think p minus one is not useful? Why would they do that? Like, why don't they just use p then, or something? Like, why why p minus one?
Or I wouldn't be surprised if it was true for general N, but the proof that here doesn't work. Like, combo no proofs aren't necessarily always tight. Freaking freak 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 uh uh This was my equality case. If I have in for P equals five, N equals two, this is my equality case. Like I really want to make it into a group so that I can have my variable take on like zero through Like for combo not to work on an expression like this, I, I need can I take product uh, 1 minus... That's even worse, I think. You want the degrees to not get too big. But no matter how I look at it, I think I have to use P minus first powers. So when I use combo null, the XI should range from 0 through P, and I just don't see why that's a good thing to use. Like, I, I want an encoding where a choice of my numbers corresponds to a choice of, like, 0 through P. And I can see it. Like, I can... See in the equality case when I have like one comma zero and zero comma ones. Um, answer should be p minus one squared. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're right. This answer should be p minus one squared. Uh, so if there's more than the, Someone asked why we were trying to get the largest zero sum. I don't understand what that means. The degree isn't that large? What do you mean the degree isn't that large? What's the product over? You wanna take a product? Over what? Like, I don't see how this, like... What, what's this gonna do? Because the degree is like... Any variable I put in here is degree at least, at least p minus 1 already. Degree is n times p minus 1. What are your variables though, Is I guess? Like, do you, how do you put a linear polynomial in here that does anything useful? Oh, also, wait a minute. Maybe the indicator variables does work. Why did I think it didn't work? Oh, because this says, yeah, two, zero one is too small. I, I really want the variables to range from zero to p. Because, like, if I have a. Uh, if I have an x at all, then x to the p minus one, like, it always x to the p minus one. So that means, like, the. This, the, vi the x has to range across 0 through p, no matter, sort of no matter what I do. Maybe I should go back to using the intrinsic field. Just the, the set. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't be using components. Ugh. 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 Same problem, yeah.
What's wrong with what you put earlier? It doesn't work. Like, if I do xv times vk, where this is a kth component, and this is like either 0 or 1, when I expand this polynomial, every time a term appears, it appears with like xv to the p minus 1. The degree is p minus 1. That means your xv, the set of values it can take, has to be like entire fp. It's too large. Did I see your message about set? Yeah, but I want to solve this problem, dang it. Like, your, your common knows how well this is not going to apply in this situation. It just, it just won't. Why do we move from the graphical interpretation? It wasn't working. <laughs> If you can get it to work, I'd like to know. Alright, uh... Maybe I should switch to FQ. Uh, if I'm working in FQ, then for every vector in FQ, you can create a variable called x sub v, which is the number of times you use v. And what's the... This is the dumbest thing I've done all day. Okay, so I need the XV to like not literally all be zero. Um, if XV and zero one, you can replace all pop. Oh, that's so smart. Holy crap. Okay, 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 we're in business. Okay, never mind. Forget everything I said. Uh, oh, I'm trying to use the vanilla theorem, but this is better. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay, so this is our polynomial. This is going to be our polynomial. Uh... What do I call it? Let's call this polynomial f, all right? It's a really multivariable polynomial. Shoot, I should know better. Oh, jeez. So that's our polynomial. Um, so this is the sum across all v. When it's expanded... Um, it's expanded... We expand it, and then every time we see xv squared, we replace it with xv. So we take modulo that ideal, or whatever you want to call it. Um, when, once I do this, I arrive at a situation with so and something. I don't know what that something is. Okay, why does this help? Why does this take into account the number of variables? <laughs> alright, alright, uh-huh. Are you sure I don't want to just go into, like, fp to the n? Like, I feel like I'm not used taking advantage of the fact that fp to the n is a vector space. And maybe I should take advantage of that. Okay, fine, fine, fine. And in addition, I need to make an adjustment so that this thing is not just the all-zero situation, where, like, all the xvs are equal to zero. Um, okay, okay. What's the adjustment term? So right now, if this is non-zero, it'll be anything from 1 through p minus 1. Um... Right, so all zeros is... Wait a minute, what am I doing? Hang on. Uh, I think I'm being stupid. I feel like I flipped what I wanted. I'm looking for a zero of the polynomial, but I really want... Not zero?
I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Was Miracle Sudoku done already? No, I've been stuck on this stupid problem since the start of the stream. Uh, I don't- see, the problem is I just don't know this theorem, but I get more and more the feeling I have to use it. This is why on an actual contest, it's ill-advised to try out things for the first time. Because <laughs> you have no idea what you're doing, and everything's a disaster. Uh, okay, uh-huh, uh-huh. It's, I feel like this is coming together, but I'm not seeing it. So... This is the, this is the polynomial I wanted. Um, thank you, 3VT, for the cheer. I'm confused. I want the polynomial to... I want valid choices to give non-zero... Let's see. I want I want valid polynomials to... Valid choices to give a non-zero value. So maybe whoever suggested the product earlier was right and I'm being dumb. But I really feel like I really want to use any of those P-1. That's why I was looking to sum, because like otherwise I can't use them. <sighs> Like, Is that it? Is that the polynomial I want? So if this polynomial is non-zero... Oh shoot, let me, let me put a 1 minus here. <sighs> do I really have to do it this way? Maybe I do. A equals 1 through n. So you use product across the components. This is actually just work. I'm so upset. That's disgusting. That's the worst thing I've seen all day. I think it's just it's gonna work. Alright, alright. Because this part will have overall degree at most n times p minus 1 if you keep doing the reduction, right? So this is f, and then f sharp is the polynomial that you get when you take mod x1 squared minus x1, etc. We'll call it f sharp because I don't know what else to call it. Um, And when I expand this and I take everything mod the xv squareds, even though p might be pretty big or whatever, um, here you can only get up to, your multilinear terms will have degree at most p minus 1. Right, because you're multiplying p minus 1 things together. Actually, for, forget that, it just it has big degree at most p minus 1, like whatever. Um, and then this has degree greater than and p minus 1 because we're assuming that we have enough things. So I don't even need- do I even need to take the mod argument? I don't think I even need the mod argument. Does it just work? I don't even think I need the mod argument, right? Like I- I- this is small degree, this is bigger degree. Are you kidding? So and- what?
Can, can someone check whether this actually works? Because if so, I'm I'm sad that this took an hour of my life. I have the wrong intuition about the degrees of polynomials. Apparently. Who uses this stuff? Took around one and a half hours actually. You did not waste an hour. See, ah. Oh. Yeah, I was getting the feel- I was just- I, I really wanted to not use combo null because one, I just don't know the technique well and if I try to do things that I'm not used to on stream, it will go disastrously and two, like, there should be another solution. But, but like... Oh no. <sighs> Does this work? No, yeah, this works all in. I didn't use n equals p minus 1. So now I'm just confused. Like, why is n equals p minus 1? Is, is it just literally just trying to be bait? I, I don't get it. Thank you, Admiral Snape, for the follow. Why would you add a completely extraneous condition and, like, at, at least put, like, 2020 or something, right? Like, why, why p minus 1? 2003. 